Today, opening statements in the New York quote unquote hush money trial against Donald Trump. Wanted to walk you through what to expect over the next four to six weeks, what to pay attention to, the five things you need to know as we begin the trial against Donald Trump. Number one, the charges. This begins with misdemeanor charges for fraudulent business transactions. The allegations are that Donald Trump wrote over $130,000 of checks to his attorney, Michael Cohen, as a funnel into $130,000 payments made over 34 different checks to porn star Stormy Daniels. 34 charges for the 34 checks written that total $130,000. Now, here's what you need to know about these would-be misdemeanor charges. First, um, these making a non-disclosure agreement, what is often termed hush money, is not in and of itself illegal. It happens all the time. It happens with Hollywood celebrities. It happens with Fortune 500 companies. And one could guess, it would be speculation, it's probably happened in the past, although it would be embarrassing and probably not something they would discuss, happened in the past with Donald Trump. It only becomes a criminal charge when it is recorded in your business transactions as something other than an NDA. In this case, the allegations by the prosecution is it was recorded as legal fees to Michael Cohen, hiding the nature of the payments. But the most important part of these misdemeanor charges is that the statute of limitations has run. These date back to 2016, 2015 and 16, and the statute of limitations has run its course. The statute of limitations is the amount of time a prosecutor has to bring a charge. They become expired at some point. Murder, for example, has no statute of limitations, but other criminal charges have to be filed by a prosecutor within a certain amount of time because memories get hazy. Interests become more suspicious. Uh, the reason to conduct a trial less compelling. So you have to bring the charges within a legislated amount of time. It's two to three years for these particular misdemeanor charges, and they've long since passed their statute of limitations. Now that brings us to number two, the charges, the felonies. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg has turned these misdemeanors into felony charges, which carry a longer statute of limitations. The statute of limitations on felony charges that you recorded false business transactions in pursuit of undermining federal election laws is a statute of limitations that has even been extended one year because of COVID. Now, in order to bootstrap himself into felony charges with a longer statute of limitations, Alvin Bragg had to find a felony underneath, a criminal conspiracy underneath the misdemeanors to make them felonies. If you recorded fraudulent business transactions in pursuit of another crime, they become a felony. And the allegation here, the crime here, is election interference. So here's how that works. The argument goes that Donald Trump, even if my speculation earlier is right, that he perhaps had tr um, created, constructed similar deals in his past, we don't know that to be true, but if he had, it would undercut the idea that he did it in this case to influence a campaign. Bragg is suggesting he did it to influence the 2016 presidential election, that he paid Stormy Daniels money to hide that story from coming out. Now, here's the trick to this being an election fraud case felony. The Federal Elections Commission has already taken a look at this case and decided, no, it is not worthy of prosecution. The Department of Justice, who maintains jurisdiction over federal crimes like election interference, has looked at this case and said, no, it's not worthy of prosecution. But going outside of his jurisdiction, and in order to extend his statute of limitations, Bragg is attempting to make the case that these payments to Stormy Daniels 
were or should have been marked down as campaign contributions to Donald Trump in his pursuit of the presidency in 2016. Again, the FEC, no. The DOJ, no. The Manhattan District Attorney, yes. Point number three to note over the next four to six weeks of this case against Donald Trump, the testimony. The two most important players in this trial will be former Trump attorney Michael Cohen and Donald Trump. You see, Donald Trump doesn't just deny that he did this in pursuit of the presidency. He denies he did it altogether. He denies that he paid money under the guise of an NDA or more salaciously hush money to Stormy Daniels. Daniels, for her sake, by the way, has gone back and forth on that. She has given testimony both ways as to whether or not she received payments of Donald Trump to keep quiet. It's going to come down to Donald Trump against Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen will get on the stand and say, this was the deal that was made with Donald Trump. I would pay Stormy Daniels and he would reimburse me through the guise of legal fees. And that's how we would fraudulently conduct business to hide this story in pursuit of the presidency. But here's the trick. Michael Cohen is a liar. He's a self-admitted liar. He has been convicted of perjury. He's lied in front of Congress. He's lied in court. He's lied publicly. He's lied over and over. He's not someone who, sitting in a courtroom, can be granted even a semblance of credibility. And you will take that against perhaps the testimony, but certainly the position of the defense for Donald Trump, who says, no, this did not happen. That is not the deal that I had with Michael Cohen. The other testimony that you will hear today and into tomorrow, most likely, is the publisher of National Enquirer, David Pecker, who will testify that Trump had a deal with the National Enquirer to conduct what's called a catch-and-kill scheme. Again, not illegal unless evidence of um, a wider conspiracy to affect an election. A catch-and-kill scheme is a technique among certain journalistic uh, outlets to pay money for a story, exclusive rights to a story, and then kill the story, never publish it, thus making it go away. But whether or not Pecker establishes there's some type of background to that type of scheme with Donald Trump, it's still going to come down to the veracity of Donald Trump versus Michael Cohen, taking you to number four, the jury. The most interesting thing to note at the outset of this trial about the jury is it has, sitting on its panel, two lawyers. Now, most people, most trial attorneys would never, ever, allow a lawyer to sit on the jury. Here's why. They become super jurors. They take over the room. We've talked here on The Will Cain Show how one juror can sway all other 11 in the jury box. And you know who's going to be most likely to do so? A lawyer. Now, you've got two lawyers, and they were allowed to remain on the jury with somewhat, at least, the consent of the prosecution and the defense. Now, the most likely reason for that is that in the end, the Trump team will try to impress upon these lawyers that regardless of the facts, this is a misapplication of the law. Now, I have no doubt that lawyers in New York City are the same as the greater voting base of New York City, 85 percent Democrat, 85 percent for Joe Biden. But it's an interesting gamble to say, yes, but at the end of the day, you are informed, you are a lawyer, and you should very least know better about the application of the law. Because if not, it takes you to number five to know about this trial, the outcome. The outcome of this trial is not about justice. It will not be about what is the end result of this once every appeal is registered. It is about what you can get a jury to say at the end of four to six weeks. And the gamble is, the Bragg can get a jury that is 85% Democrat to say at the end of this, regardless of the application of the law, convicted felon Donald Trump. It will most likely not survive appeal. And if it survives an appeal in New York City or an appeal in New York State, it doesn't survive an appeal to the United States Supreme Court. 
that is almost guaranteed because it's that weak of a case legally. But it's not a case about the law. It's a case about politics. And the win in politics is, quote unquote, convicted felon Donald Trump. That is something they hope not that will survive appeal, but that will survive until November. That is what you can expect. Those five things are what to watch for over the next four to six weeks in the trial against Donald Trump.